Unity is one of the most widely used video game engines on Earth, with around 40% of all modern games being built on their platform. And Unity's market share is a staggering 70% for mobile games, which is the largest and fastest growing gaming market. Unity software is positioned to do great things over the entire gaming industry, or at least it was until it lit itself on fire earlier this month. So in this episode, I'll lay out exactly what's going on, just how bad I think the damage is going to be, and what I'm doing with my Unity software stock as a result. Your time is valuable, so let's get right into it. I'm going to start this video in an unusual place, but trust me, it's very relevant to what's going on today. The year is 2011, and Electronic Arts, the company behind massive franchises like FIFA, Battlefield, Skyrim, and The Sims, is just wrapping up an earnings call when their CEO at the time says this. When you're six hours into playing Battlefield, and you run out of ammo in your clip, and we ask you for a dollar to reload, you're not really very price sensitive at that point in time. When a consumer gets engaged in a property, they might spend 10, 20, 30, 50 hours on the game, and then when they're deep into the game, they're well invested in it. We're not gouging, but we're charging, and at that point in time, the commitment can be pretty high. EA CEO wasn't seriously suggesting that gamers should be charged for every time they reload in an online shooting game. But what he was seriously pointing out was the kinds of moments where gamers are most vulnerable and willing to trade real-life money for in-game items like when they're reloading in the middle of a firefight. And this wasn't just a thought experiment either. In fact, EA's hyper-monetization strategy in the early 2010s would cause them to be voted consumerists' worst company in America two years in a row, beating out hated companies like Bank of America, Ticketmaster, and Comcast for the honors. In an incredible twist of irony, EA CEO had to step down in 2013 due to the company's poor financial performance. I'm telling you this story because that CEO was John Riccatello, and just one year later, he became the CEO of Unity Software, a position he still has today. That doesn't make Unity Software a bad company. Actually, quite the opposite. I started investing in Unity Software because they run one of the most widely used game engines on the planet, regardless of how you slice the data. Like I said earlier, Unity is the best mainstream option for developing mobile games, boasting over a 70% mobile gaming market share this time last year. And that's a big deal for investors because consumers spend more money on mobile games than every other kind of game put together. Unity Software also has over a 50% market share for augmented and virtual reality games, which is a relatively small segment today, but is growing by double digit percentage points every year while the PC and console gaming markets have basically flatlined. And their platform isn't just for gaming. Around two years ago, Unity Software acquired Weta Digital, the Oscar-winning visual effects studio behind films like Lord of the Rings, Avatar, Planet of the Apes, and Marvel's Avengers. So John Riccatello and the rest of Unity's leadership were actually doing a great job growing the company and making it attractive to investors. By the way, if you want a great app for stock market research and investing, check out Moomoo. This is the best app for comprehensive market data and tracking analyst ratings for individual companies. Here, let me show you how I use it myself. If I go to NVIDIA's page and then click on analyst ratings, I can see every analyst covering the stock right now. I follow Atif Malik because he has a very high success rate for NVIDIA stock. His average rate of return is over 60%, and right now he has a 12-month price target of $630 for NVIDIA, which would mean over 40% gains from today and I can follow Atif to get notifications whenever he issues a new price target. In fact, Moomoo lets me follow the best analysts for every stock I want, which is a total game changer for finding great companies and investing at great prices. And if you sign up right now, you can get up to 16 free stocks, including a share of Tesla or Google. All you need to do is download the app using my link, keep your funds at that level for at least 60 days, and enjoy your free stocks. But this offer ends soon. So make sure to get started today, and a big thank you to Mumu and to you for supporting the channel. Alright, it's important to understand that Unity isn't just a game engine. It's also an advertising platform and has built-in tools for managing in-game microtransactions, which together account for about half of Unity's total revenues today. That's not necessarily a bad thing either. But it's clear that Unity has been prioritizing the development of these monetization features even over their core game development tools. For example, last summer Unity announced their merger with IronSource, which is a software company focused on app monetization and distribution. 
IronSource's monetization tools were integrated directly with Unity's game creation tools to give developers early feedback on how to tweak things like microtransactions and ad placements based on player engagement. But not all game developers want to focus on these things so early in the game development process. Some just want to build a great game and then add in purchasable items for convenience or cosmetics down the line. And when game developers called Unity out for focusing more on advertising and monetization than on the core tools needed to make great games, John Riccatello responded with this gem in an interview with Pocket Gamer. It's a very small portion of the gaming industry that doesn't prioritize monetization early in the development process, and these are some of my favorite people in the world to fight with. They're the most beautiful and pure, brilliant people, and they're also some of the biggest f idiots. That quote was the first time that I questioned my investment in Unity software. Not because the CEO dropped an f-bomb in an interview, but because there is an obvious disconnect between how he thinks about video games versus how some of the best game studios in the world do. The best video games in the world are labors of love. For example, Baldur's Gate 3 came out at the start of August and immediately topped all of the gaming charts and shattered review records. This game, which is based on Dungeons & Dragons, will make its parent company Hasbro more money than their last 10 years of films combined, which include all of the Transformers movies. Baldur's Gate 3 has no ads, no microtransactions, and no paid downloadable content of any kind. It's made over half a billion dollars since August simply because it's an incredible game. The same is true with The Legend of Zelda, Super Mario, Tony Hawk, and probably every other great game you're thinking about right now. Now, to be fair, John Riccatello apologized for calling game developers who want to focus on making games f***ing idiots, and said that he would do better. And being a f***ing idiot myself, by which I mean a Unity shareholder, I believed him. Which brings us to this past week, when Unity published a new blog post talking about changes to their plans and their pricing, which immediately set the entire game development community on fire. These changes are so hated that one day after Unity announced them, they had to close down multiple offices due to what they said was a credible death threat, which was allegedly made by a Unity employee after the announcement went live. The elephant in the room here is the new Unity runtime fee. If a game exceeds certain revenue and number of install thresholds, the developer will be charged as much as 20 cents per install. For example, let's say your game made $200,000 in the last 12 months and has been installed 200,000 times or more. So maybe it costs a dollar on an app store. If it's downloaded 200,000 times more in 2024, you as the developer will owe Unity $40,000 just on this fee alone. And before I get a ton of comments saying that this policy isn't a big deal because it only affects about 10% of the developers on the platform, yeah, you're right. The problem is that it's the 10% that actually achieve some amount of scale and financial success with their games. That's what every single developer is striving for. But now, the more successful your game is, the higher this fee becomes, to the point where it may not be worth developing a good game on Unity's software in the first place, which really begs the question of who is the f idiot after all. But it gets even worse than this, because this fee starts on January 1st, and the blog post was only published on September 12th, leaving game developers with less than four months between this announcement and the fee going into effect. Obviously, it takes way more than four months to build a game, which means these pricing changes will effectively kill thousands of games that didn't account for this new fee and don't have the time, money, or the staff to start from scratch in another game engine. Also, you know how YouTube comments are filled with thousands of annoying spam bots? Well, it's not hard to imagine a similar army of bots targeting small indie game studios by just uninstalling and reinstalling their games over and over. Or what about when somebody who owns a game installs it on a laptop and a desktop? That's not that crazy, but it just doubled this Unity runtime fee for every time that happens. Unity even confirmed this with Axios' gaming columnist Steven Totillo. If a player deletes a game and reinstalls it, that's two installs, so two charges. The same if they install on two devices. But less than one day after they confirmed this policy, Unity ended up reversing it, saying that only the initial install would be counted. It's just so painfully obvious that nobody at Unity thought this through at all. So how will they determine which downloads count towards the threshold? Well, it turns out that the answer is by using a special piece of software called Just Trust Me Bro. 
Unity says it will use fraud detection tools and allow developers to report possible instances of fraud to a compliance team. But if they have this proprietary software to count the installs, shouldn't they be the ones supplying that data in a way that developers can verify it before paying these crazy fees? And it's even worse than that, because these fees are also retroactive. So if a game was made a few years ago, but it still exceeds these revenue and install thresholds, which developers have no way to verify, the developer is still on the hook for these new fees, even though they were announced years after the game came out. But don't worry, because there is a way to waive this fee entirely, and that's for developers to sign up for Unity's ad mediation platform called Level Play, which came out of their merger with Iron Source. That means this whole thing is actually just all about extorting game developers to get them off of AppLovin, which is Iron Source's biggest competitor today. Basically, game developers have to bring their ads business to Unity or pay the price. Also, here's a fun fact. When Unity announced their intention to merge with Iron Source, AppLovin actually submitted an unsolicited offer to merge with Unity instead, provided that they terminate their deal with Iron Source. Today, AppLovin's stock is worth about 10% more than Unity and Iron Source combined. After this 13% landslide, this whole fiasco has cost Unity so far. But Unity's stock price dropping is just the short term pain. The long term pain is going to be much worse as every corner of the gaming industry bands together to condemn these new fees, start porting their production pipelines to new game engines, and obviously lawyer up to fight these retroactive fees. Even if Unity walks back this entire announcement, the damage is already done. There's no reason for game developers to ever trust Unity's leadership again, especially John Riccatello, who has a decades long history of putting monetization before game development. There's no reason for game developers to assume that the next change won't be an even bigger surprise and even harder to fight because the only lesson that Unity will learn from this mess is how to add new fees that are legally bulletproof, which means there's no real reason for game developers to stick to Unity if they have any other option at all. And in an industry as big as gaming, there's always another option. And it's not just about today's developers. Learning to build on top of a video game engine is a serious industry skill, and game engines rely on large communities to thrive. If projects using Unity stop getting funded, developers will stop pitching them. If today's developers stop making money with Unity, tomorrow's developers won't learn to use it either. And that, my friends, is how legacy companies lose to their disruptors. I've been a gamer for almost three decades, and a Unity shareholder for almost three years now. I've covered the stock many times on this channel since its IPO in 2020. And I can tell you that I've never seen a company destroy its reputation with its core audience so quickly. Not ever. So whether Unity is about to see a mass exodus of developers, or a class action lawsuit, or just walk back this entire announcement and hope for the best, I'm selling every single one of my shares. The only thing that would change my mind is if Unity makes sweeping changes in how early and how often they communicate with game developers, starts prioritizing good games over corporate greed, and replaces John Riccatello with a new CEO. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Ticker Symbol U. My name is Alex, reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you. But, you know, like yourself, not, not the stock. You, you get it, right?